13th, I believe it is. Yeah. And here we are on Tuesday. Um, and I'm going to go over my positioning, what I did in the past, and so you can have an idea of what I'm doing and where I'm at. Um, you have three different numbers here that are key. You have your 21K, your 18K, and your 15,800. Now, what I did way back when with Do Kwan and all that news and everything, I could see the negative volume over in here. Um, even though we did get a spike up, that was brief above the 21K, is I hedged 50% of my Bitcoin. I was looking for something negative to occur. And if, if it kept going up, great. But if not, I at least uh, had my target on my uh, uh, second number, which was uh, 15,800. And anyway, we got the news with uh, Sam Bankman Freed. So he actually did me a big favor and we dropped all the way down to that 15,800 where I covered the short and bought an additional 20% um, went long. And then we bounced off of the XY trade. If you remember, I got a video, so I'll probably link in the room that shows the previous XY trade that I had once on XRP when we had volatility in it. Um, so we had an XY trade down to 15,800 and under all the way back to 18K. So bought, sold here, and then went short 20% of the Bitcoin I owned and then bought again at the 15,800. That was the second test of this number down here. Uh, and then uh, it was basically just hold. We did briefly trade back under the 15,800, but not for long. Um, and then we retested the 18K as we did today. Now, this is where I were the buy here. Uh, I could just exit here and, you know, just be holding long and strong and just waiting. Or I could hedge. So I decided to hedge uh, what I bought here. Uh, so the 20% I bought here is hedged. So basically, it's as if I sold it. Think of it that way. But a head short, if you do it on something like BitMEX or whatever you have access to to do that, um, you basically are holding it against your longs is what you know I do. And I guess you guys understand that. That's why I call them hedge shorts because they're hedging what you currently already own. And if you own Bitcoin, this is a great way to build your Bitcoin up uh, by taking advantage of different key levels. Now, where do we go from here? Well, you know what my thinking is. If we break down under that 15.8, our next level, which is a major level, all right? This is not a major level. This is an in-between level. Um, now, that doesn't mean we can't just hold here and that's the end of the, the down move, but because uh, nobody can predict the future, as you've heard me say many times. But this is a major level. So if we retest here, um, this is where I would look for a move to go from here, not only up to the 15.8, but probably up to, not only up to 18K, but to 21 at some point. This would be the end all, be all move. And it could flatten out. You know, one of the patterns that I've seen in other markets is you get the move back up to test this point up here, which was an XY you flatten out and just becomes very boring. And at some point, some news or something comes out, we go all the way back down to here. And then there's, it becomes empty, a void, and then it quickly spikes back above. People are caught off guard and then they send it all the way back up to this point up here. Uh, seen that happen. Now I had similar movement on um, Ethereum. And what do I do with Ethereum? Well, my head short from here covered down here and just bought an additional amount of Ethereum, which you should sell right here. This would be the equal point. Uh, the 1340s should be the equal point, the upper 40 and for what you see like with uh, Bitcoin. As you can see, this is the high right back here um, from here. But what I'm actually doing is I'm going to play it a little bit more bullishly and just hold on to it. I'm going to see if I can get numbers closer up to here. If I can get back above to the 15K and focus on this area right here, this little uh, doji-like pattern, 
of these two bars on the daily, um, then I'll, I'll think about it. But right now, I'm, I'm, I like, I'm going to go with the positive moment, you know, that we have here. But others, remember, I just give the levels and I don't tell people what to trade. That's not what I do. I'm not a financial advisor. As you can go through my videos and notice that I say that many times. Um, I just trade the technicals and the math of the market and, you know, common sense, basically. Um, but you do it with discipline. And I don't use leverage. That's the biggest thing. And another thing is somebody in the room came today with the leverage. I don't want to hear it. Uh, go to the swing or scalp discussions if you guys want to use leverage. And one of the things I would do if I was using leverage is I would use money management, number one. There are money management formulas out there um, that I have gone over before, and I'll repost those videos. And I would start with a small sum to see how I do over time. If I grow the money, then I'll add more money. But if it loses money, then I will shrink the money. And that's one of the key prime benefits of money management is you reduce your losses when things are bad and you increase your profits when things are good. And that's just common sense. Um, just like using good risk reward ratios. I've seen a lot of traders that try to uh, not use risk reward correctly. And that's where they're risking one to get three or five or whatever. Instead, they do an inverse uh, and they risk more uh, than they actually gain. And uh, they have a lot of winning small trades, but they have bigger losers that eclipse all of their winning smaller trades. So that's stupid. That's just bad math and bad trading in my view. So keep that in mind. So you've seen what I've done here. Um, I'm holding long on the Ethereum. I, this just feels and looks very bullish to me. So we'll see what happens. The market's kind of in a bull mode. And we could get a spike all the way up to this 15. And I don't mind. I, I had really good profits from what I've done in the trading the past few months. Um, Sam Bankman Freed has been a, a positive for me. <laughs> uh, funny enough, he added volatility. That's what I live off of. That's what I, I go off of. So this is important to me. So um, this worked out. Bitcoin worked out, and those are my 90% something percent of all of my um, coins that I own. You know, my crypto is in those two coins. And then from there, XRP, and uh, then all the other coins, which are, uh, I just trade for fun mostly, not even for fun, but uh, I don't put any risk on there because, um, uh, you know, I don't trust a lot of, like, uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, why don't you go with uh, BNB and Binance coin? I don't trust it. Um, uh, so don't expect me. I, that's one I would definitely stay away from. I do like other coins. So let's go to one that I do like and I think has a future. And this is Link right here. And Link had a great buy right over here. Where was it? Just under $6. And then it went all the way down to the 4 uh well, that was my other buy point, but never hit there. Uh, went all the way down the, the low $5 range. And then now we've meandered around the $7 range, and we spiked all the way up to 9 um, But that's one coin that I like. Uh, that has a, a good history, and uh, that's one of the altcoins. But again, I can't put any real, you know... <laughs> Um, I feel comfortable with Ethereum, XRP, and Bitcoin. Those are the majors, and uh, that's where I'm not going. Not I will not go outside my risk because I've always done well uh, in crypto. But I, I've done well because I've stuck to the the big guys. And um, for those who are more want more risk, you there are plenty of coins that I like that are out there, and I'll probably go over and create another video that goes over them. Here goes one, um, uh, Avalanche, right? Uh, this is under its 88.6. This is looking to break out here. This is one I would watch if I wanted an old coin. This has got great dynamics. I've seen coins like this build like this and tight geometries that over extended periods of time where it becomes 
kind of boring looking and then you see them explode and I would expect it to get back up to that uh, to double in price almost up to here this is very consolidated so this is probably one of my favorites um, you seen Matic what I showed you over there uh, and you seen Link Matic has always done well from the buy point that was all the way down here that was very oversold and a few people that uh, like this went over and they bought it too and now they're you know they're wondering where do they sell where do they, I mean for me I'm just basically holding on to it I don't have that much of it it hit that 88.6 um, others out there too uh, you got Uniswap that's still holding pretty well a lot of these are showing bullish signs uh, let's take a look at Litecoin. Litecoin went to its target. You remember the geometry that I put posted in the video before. I like this one very much because of the technicals. The volume, the geometry was the best. So this was going to go above the $70 range when it went all the way down to the 40 uh, where I was a buyer down here. And it was going to go back up to here. I, I could tell you this was my favorite simply because of the technicals and the volume. And uh, it was technically, it had the best geometry and uh, movement together. And sure enough, it went back above there, and it's even trading above there. It's in the upper 70 range, uh, closing it on the $80 range. Now, this has some good, um, uh, you know, this was overlooked for a while. But in the future, this is going to have its happening before Bitcoin, and it's going to do it by ne next year in August. So that could become a focal point. Um, so, but anyway, it had good geometry. Like I said, went above the target point from here. Um, if you are somebody that, uh, it, let's say that it goes above here and gets all the way back to the 90s range, and you're sitting on 100% profit. Now, here goes some of the philosophies that I've taught in the room. Whenever you get a coin that doubles in price, um, I often will take off half. Why do I do that? Because that's what I call a free ride, right? So you got $1, it turns into $2. You take out the original $1, right? And you have no risk. You're no longer at risk. So you can do whatever you want with that $1 you originally invested, and you have that extra dollar. Now, if it goes back down from there, well, then, you know, so be it. But you're you basically eliminated your risk and you can't lose by taking profits old saying and um, another thing is dollar cost averaging you'll often see me buying as we go down you know and there's many ways to do that and money management using formulas there there's plenty of uh, fixed uh, fractal there's all kinds of uh, formulas out there so these are things I'm going to repeat since I'm back in the group and uh, uh, we're working to build VCT to be its best once again. Uh, and I'm going to go over all of these things as if it is brand new. Uh, because for some, it, it's going to be. There's a lot of you know corpses over the crypto scape that did not survive the, this bear market. And there's been, it's been a heck of a downturn, right? I mean, just last year. Uh, we were in the 60,000 range and now we're under 20,000 on Bitcoin. So go figure. Um, but anyway, you get my point. Um, so I don't have to go over and uh, repeat this over and over again. I will be going over a lot of the other coins and, and everything really in, in the coming weeks. I mean, I'm going to be doing a, an additional EDU video this week. And uh, as well as the um, additional uh, end of week, uh, you know, probably Saturday, uh, uh, another video for the end of the week. So I'm doing two week videos a week just for the market for updates. And I'm going to do another educational in the middle of the week, probably around Thursday. I would expect that one. Uh, today's Tuesday. Yeah, Thursday, I'll do the EDU video. And I'm thinking of topics. Um, I've not really come up with any that I really am fixated on. But I, I guess I could ask in the room, what things do you want to know about or uh, are interested in that you would like to learn about? And go from there. But uh, in the meantime, 
that's where we are at the market. A um, few people ask me about silver. Silver is still going up. Look at this. It's going up to this point. Now this would be akin to what I just showed you on that, that prior chart. Uh, if uh, we get a breakout to the upside. And the same thing with XRP. If it went up to the closer to the, the, the upper 40 cent range or 50, there, that could be a possibility. But silver has done this and it's moved up. And I, I told you about the inflation. This is a great hedge. And this was its buy point all the way down here in the 18 to and under. Um, broke out from this pattern here and had its one breakout here and then built and then congested and then boom, breaks out here. Now there's a good chance that it could pull back to the $20 range, but right now it's in an up cycle, so um, that's good. Uh, Gold has moved above 18K, I mean 1,800, 1,000, I can't even say this anymore, 1,800, uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, it broke out finally. It's been staying under the 1,800 mark for a long time, and uh, so that's a good sign, and we'll see if it can get join silver. It's got plenty of upside. It's got another... Um, about sixty dollars to go up to get up to, to be equalized with silver but you know silver is my favorite because I think it just has on a percentage basis more upside available to it and it's far more useful of a, a, a metal um, unfortunately uh, you get uh, oil spiking kind of now I thought about this too is that China has been locked down and uh, for a while, and there are a huge amount of people that uh, are becoming no longer locked down. They're becoming free to move around. So this is, could uh, be a prime factor in the um, uh, prices of oil being down. So that's kind of a negative, is that oil prices might spike and start to go higher from here. Uh, but we'll see, um, because once the Chinese are able to be free and move like they should in a normal society, which unfortunately they're not, they're in a, a, a nutbag communist country, which basically they put an extreme amount of control, which I can understand because of the virus. So they're pragmatic. They're not, you know, if you're going to have communists, at least, you know, uh, they're trying to protect their people. Can't be against that. But... You, you can't restrict uh, people from existing and you know it's just that's a little bit too crazy and extreme and I think they pulled back from that so you should see uh, the uh, energy use go up there uh, because they want to get back to work could you imagine this you're being told you have to stay in your apartment and you're not allowed to work or make a living <laughs> yeah you would have a revolution in, in any other democratic country you would have your government officials would be, be been shot and, uh, or taken out and hung if they tried to stop people from working and existing. <laughs> or they would just ignore them. Um, so uh, that's what was causing a lot of the, the riots in China because of that, the COVID lockdowns. Uh, well, that's becoming coming to an end, uh, and they're dismantling that. So they're going to be using more energy, and that could cause prices to go up. Uh, seasonally, it's it's less in the winter because there's just less movement overall. But anyway, um, that's it for this video. I'll have another one out in a couple days on Thursday. And uh, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.